Right, we have our next question, our next question for the night, and uh, we'll throw this open to the guys. Let me just um, do the question, then we'll welcome the guys back. Um, so this question is, if God is a God of light, and no darkness is in him, and he created everything, does that mean he also created the devil, the evil, and the darkness? So, I'm going to throw this open to you guys. Um, who's who's starting me off? Oh, hold on. I haven't got your audio on. Why have I not got your audio on? Try now. One, two, three. Yep, yeah, got you. Got you. Good, good, good. Um, no, okay. Um, I, 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 there's a lot can be said on this, and I'll leave some areas clearly open for the guys to pick up on. Um, but I think the the important thing to understand is that God does not want to be surrounded by machines, and by that I mean, in all He does with His creation, He gives it the power of choice. And when we look at God creating evil, God doesn't create evil, God creates choice. And evil is essentially when someone turns away from the will of God. And if you turn away from the will of God, that becomes evil, because God is love. If you turn away from love, then you are naturally turning towards evil. Now, God has given us that choice, and that's clear, we can, not being funny, we don't need to even turn the news on to understand that we make bad choices because we see choices being made continually that's harmful to people. And every time we refuse to love God and refuse to love our neighbour as ourself, evil comes out of it. Now what we have to remember is that we are not the only active agents in creation. There is also the angelic realm. There is also the senior if you like, angels. And we know that Satan was once an angel of light. Satan or the devil, if you like. Mm -hmm. But it's clear that if we have free choice, and if we didn't have free choice, we would simply be a machine doing what God wanted us to do. The minute we have free choice to exercise ourselves, that's just the same as the angelic realm. And we, we can find actually at least three occasions in the personage of Satan who said he will make his throne on high, try to kick God off the throne, if you like, and pride boosted himself up, believed in himself, believed in his, the possibility of what he wanted, and that came crushing down. And then we find also in Genesis 6, we find angels that leave their first estate, that leave heaven, if you like, to do something that they wanted to do, and that's a separate incident. Uh, and their exercise choice and evil comes out of that and ultimately led to the flood. My granddaughter asked, asked a brilliant question about the flood, about why did God have to destroy the world? But it actually comes back to that. It's a very complicated question, but it comes back down to the choice that angelic creatures made. And then we often find, too, uh, references to fallen angels, maybe with Satan's rebellion as a separate incident. Uh, and so... If there's choice, there is the choice to say yes to God, and there is the choice to turn your back on what you do. <coughs> and evil is a consequence, a natural evil, a, a natural consequence that comes from denying God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's that's uh, that's uh, is it that 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 idea that uh, there has to be choice, um, otherwise there can be no no good. The love without choice isn't isn't love um now i don't know i don't know if you guys have talked about who's going to answer next but i'm going to throw a question out at you if god is all-knowing and sees the beginning from the end and he knew the damage satan was going to do why did he create satan and did god have a choice not to create satan knowing what he was going to do Okay, can I answer? You can. You can. <laughs> I think it's a very good question, that. And there's a couple of ones, actually, um, about evil and the, the eternity ahead, you know, uh, what will happen. Let me deal with that one, though. 
Uh, why did God create Lucifer? And by the way, as, as David said, God doesn't create evil. Lucifer was brilliant, top of the range, you know, major um, uh, angel. He was what was called a covering angel. So he was on either on the right side or the left side of God on the throne and was major. And that's why he vaunted himself. And then he became proud and, 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 and tried to take God's place. And that's when evil came in, in his heart. But why did God create him knowing he was going to do that? I think the detail is hard to find because scriptures don't say a lot, a lot of it. But we do know that God does turn evil to good. For example, Satan's major coup, as far as he would see it, was getting Jesus crucified. Mm -hmm. And yet, precisely, it's through the cross that our salvation comes. And at the moment of Christ's death, the power of the gospel comes into being and is released. Now, God's plan of salvation was ordained from eternity past. So if you have salvation, you have to be saved from something. And that process of being saved from something means you have to have a protagonist like Satan, who tempted and brought you know, started it off in the garden with Adam and Eve and so on. Um, and he, he allows the thing to happen that actually shows his mighty power and grace by taking the very thing that's evil and turning it around for good. You think about Joseph, for example, where Joseph, you know, got taken into Egypt and all the rest of it. And yet God used that to generate a guy in a very key position so that the nation of Israel could come forth from Egypt as a nation and not just a bunch of Bedouins. So we don't know the full details, and I believe that heaven and, uh, and, and eternity will show that up in due course. But for me, that's one of the keys as to why he allowed that to happen. The interesting hmm. question sometime I would like to know is if we fall in time, if, if, if evil came and we fell, would that be possible in eternity in heaven? That's an interesting one. Sorry, <laughs> say that again? If, if the, we were able to fall, okay, which we did, and Satan came in and we fell and Satan and evil came in, sin came in, would that be possible again in heaven? Whew. Well, there's, there's a good you know, one. I've thought about that one as well. <laughs> and I think sometimes that the fact that we'll see the marks in the hands of Jesus and, you know, hopefully if I lose a leg, when I've got my new body, I'll, have a, I'll be complete. But Jesus will have the marks of his suffering with him forever. And yeah. I just, and it's crossed my mind, and I don't know if it's true or not, but it's crossed my mind that maybe the Lord's just thinking, I'll just leave a reminder there of what their sin has cost. Hmm. Just in case they get a little bit twitchy and do a bit naughty things. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we, I've, I've heard Christians say as well that we're saved to sin no more. So that, but, yeah, are we capable of? I mean, God's not going to take free will off us. I guess. I, I guess the key difference between us and the angelic horse, or, or or Lucifer, is Lucifer had never come back from the place where he needed saving to start with. He'd never been redeemed. He'd never received the gift we've we've yeah. got now. Yeah, um, so he'd restored. never experienced and, and, what and we've experienced. In fact, we the angels him. experience what we've experienced. When we see him. Mm -hmm. We will be like, be like him. Yeah. Right. We will be transformed. Yeah. Good point. So mm -hmm. we will be elevated away from what we've been into something Absolutely. that's identified with Christ. I think yeah. the, and if Christ is incapable of sin, then I think we will be too. Yeah. The other thing is scripture says we have been saved, we are being saved, and we will and be we saved. Will something be saved. will yeah. happen within us. There won't be just a change of body. But I no, believe no. a whole change of, of uh, makeup uh, that will mean that we will not have to sit. But I thought I'd throw that away so you guys could just <laughs> chew on the bone. <laughs> I've never ever really thought that any of us will sin, but the <laughs> thought it's... has crossed my mind, you know. Yeah. Can, can, I, can I ask a question? I'm going to ask you this one, Cliff. Um, I apologise for throwing this question at you. What about the evil we see in the world? Because we live in a world full of injustice, we live in a world full of pain. We live in a world full of people who wrong. But also we live in a world where the natural world acts in a way we would see to be evil. Earthquakes. Um, I, I know who was a David Attenborough who had this. This uh, there's, there's a worm that exists and all it ever seems to do is burrow into people's eyes and 
cause them to go blind is that how how can that exist in a in a, in a good world how, how can things that we see in the world and nature that seem so very evil exist i think because we live in a fallen world you know we, we live in a world that's not what god intended it to be yeah and it's, it goes back to what you know dave kicked off with at the beginning it's all a matter of choice and it's because of choice that you know the whole of nature you know, the Bible says it groans, waiting for the, the redemption hmm. uh, of the sons of God. The whole of creation is ready for this new world. You know, they, they're talking now in the world about a new world order that's coming. And uh, they're expecting, you know, a new world order down, you know, a natural new world order. But there is a new world order coming. And the book of Revelation identifies that where, you know, we will look for a new heaven and a new earth. Mm -hmm. There'll be no more sorrow, no more crying, no more pain. Even during the millennium reign of Christ, when he reigns on this earth for a thousand years, this earth will be restored back to what it was in, uh, at Eden, you know. Uh, um, because the coming of Christ will not only mean the redemption of the, the people of God, it will also mean the redemption of nature as well. The lion will lie down with the lamb. Yeah. You know, the ox will eat straw, you know, uh, the, and, and the whole of nature, you know, there'll be no more death, no more crying, no more sorrow. For the form of thing. Nature. Yeah, absolutely right. Uh, yeah, that's passed good. Away. That's good. So I think the answer is, Luke, that we, we live in a fallen world, and that world has fallen because of choice. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, I think, we're and, and it's not just because world. it's not just people that are fallen. It's the world is fallen. The world is hasn't as it should be. Yeah. No, and it's interesting that Romans talks about creation groaning, yeah, awaiting the redemption of the sons of God, and you can see that in the terms, you know, Teutonic plates crashing into each other, causing tsunamis or whatever else. Um, there is a a disconnect in the world in the in the, the creation which is major um, until it's redeemed, until God does something about it. So it's like out, out and we, we're back under the rule of Jesus. Yeah. You know, the, the question that was asked, the, the first question where we talked about, how do we know we're following the, 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 the true God? Yeah. The God that we serve is an all-known God. And he did know. He's the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. He knows everything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that he doesn't know. And he knew that Satan would fall. He knew that man would fall. And even before man was created, the love that God has for us, the Bible says we were chosen in him before the world was ever created. Mm. That's right. So before the world was ever created, God knew that there would be a people who would love him. Mm -hmm. And would love him freely. And that's what it is when we serve the Lord. We, we love him freely. And, uh, you know, a, a great desire in our hearts is to get to know him more and more. Hmm. But he knew that and chose us. He knew there would a day come when a call would come to our lives. The Bible says many are called, but few are chosen. Hmm. Everyone could be chosen, but God knows those who, when the call comes, will respond to it. And I can look back to a day in my life when I heard the call of God and I was convicted of my sin and I realized I needed a savior and realized that Jesus died for me. Yeah. And I responded to that call. And God saw that before the world was ever created. And I was chosen in him before the world ever began. Yeah, that's great. That's great. Thank you, Cliff. Um, does anyone have any final thoughts? I think we probably should draw up a close in a moment. Does, does anyone have any uh, final final things they just want to leave us with on that? Can you just read the question again? Because there's something else that was going to pop up. Yeah, sure. The question was, if God is a God of light and there's no darkness in him, and he created everything, does that mean he created the devil slash evil slash darkness? I, I think the only other point which is probably worth making is that you know, darkness is an absence of light. Mm. 
mm, and where there is light, there isn't darkness. Yeah. And Jesus said he is the light of the world. Now, I know we can talk about nighttime as, a, as an absence of, of light, but, uh, you know, we, we're talking in a more metaphorical sense. And, um, you know, the darkness in a human soul exists because there isn't light. The darkness, the spiritual darkness that inhabits some people's life mm. can go like that because the minute, the second, the millisecond that the light is switched on, mm. the darkness can't fight it. You don't pour a light on and suddenly find a battle in the middle of the room. Mm. As soon as light is there, darkness can't exist. Yeah. It can try and find a place to hide, and we call that a shadow, you know, because the light hits an object and casts a shadow. Mm -hmm. But if the light of God comes into your life, there's no shadow. Mm -hmm. There's no corner that isn't illuminated. Mm -hmm. And if somebody is experiencing the spiritual darkness, all I would say is find the light. Yeah. The light of the can world. I in, can I add a little comment there? Mm -hmm. When Moses went up Sinai to meet with God, there's a wonderful verse in Exodus that says, he went into the darkness where God was. And I believe, although God doesn't create darkness, as you quite rightly say, it's an absence of light, that God knows what it's like when we can go into a dark place. He's been there. He knows what it is. He doesn't create it, but he knows how to conquer it. He knows how to live there. And Moses' communion with God took him into that place. He went into the darkness where God was. And there's a marvelous thing because, of course, the, the whole thing was, his, uh, was Moses' personal relationship with God where he could be there in the, even the darkest place. And mm. God was with him. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Dave. You know, just, uh, just as we're drawing to a close there, it does make me think, you know, we talk about this word evil, but what do we define that word by? You know, we say something's evil. The, the fact, the existence of evil is in a sense a proof of the existence of God. Because how else can you call something evil? We talked about at the beginning, I think it was it was Dave Perry who said it maybe, who um, said that evil is going against the will of God. And, you know, we, we're quite happy to say, oh, there's no truth, um, there's no right, there's no wrong. But yet, find me somebody who wouldn't say Hitler was evil. <laughs> you know, we have some very specific definitions but evil can only be truly defined if there's good if there's a fixed point of good if there you can only have a moral law with a moral law giver i think that's what ravi zachariah said that that you need a fixed reference point and therefore evil being against the will of god can only exist when there's a perfect will of god yeah. and so Actually, evil isn't a sense of the thing. It's it's something that's against a thing that exists that perfect. Evil is choosing your own way. Now, we wouldn't be able to call it evil if there wasn't a perfect plan that we should be in that actually God made for us. Does, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think that's... Uh, hopefully we've answered that question as, 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 uh, as fully as we can. Um, hopefully uh, to the satisfaction of, of the person who sent it in. Um, can I just say, guys, thank you so much for um, for, for joining tonight and, and answering those questions. It's been a great night.